episode is brought to you by GameFound. Create a free pledge manager for your project. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Hello. I'm Mike Delicio. And welcome to Crowd Surfing, where we take a look at projects on Kickstarter and GameFound. And for once, I, we have four GameFound yeah, things today. There's a lot a of GameFound stuff. Mm -hmm. I know. GameFound is going up, but also Kickstarter is still going strong because one of the biggest Kickstarter projects of the year we're talking about today. For mm -hmm. sure. And I mean, I, I can say that confidently it will probably be in the top 10 of the year when we get I to it. I think that's a. F <laughs> yes. And when I say that. I'm talking about the dice deck. <laughs> ah, <laughs> no, oh, no I, 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 I wish. Um, but um, the uh, yeah, there's nothing much more to get. We're going to look at the projects. And yes, we're going to be slightly, I guess, uncouth here and talk about our own Kickstarter mm. real briefly. Yeah. Supporting Dice Tower, we fund it. Yay. I'm excited mm -hmm. about that. Sure. We have a... Uh, we're about to hopefully hit another stretch goal. We're down to hours now, the, the yeah. hour countdown. Yeah. Oof. Um, if we get the 325, you get the pick top 10 list. The 350 is the big goal because we want to set up another studio. Um, and I won't do that if we don't reach a stretch goal because it's going to cost money. A lot. Right. <laughs> um, but uh, we're looking forward to that. Uh, if you might have been in our last top 10, we're gonna, we want to work on audio and get cameras fixed and stuff. And when you support this, I've said it a zillion times, but it still doesn't get through to some folks. You're supporting the Dice Tower. Right. We then... We'll send you a small reward that is not worth your money. Um, and there's a gazillion rewards here. We just got the rewards in from last year's. Yeah. We got them. And I got to say, the puzzle looked really cool. It really did. Mm -hmm. I, the the playmats are fantastic quality. Yeah. So Good stuff. Absolutely. Anyway, consider that. Or here's another bunch of projects for you to look at. All right, here we go. Total War Rome, the board game. Now, if I'm correct, this is based on a video game. I believe so. I think I think so. Yeah. yeah, I haven't played it. I have not either. Because if it wasn't based on a video game, I would have sat here for a long time and think, "How's this game making 309?" Yeah. Because it looks like every other troops on a map sabor. It looks like it's an Academy Games it from that almost, picture, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. PSC. Um, I'm trying to think if they've done a big grandiose. There's my word again. Yes. Uh, production like this. They before. have. They did the uh, Command and Colors, that huge oh, they did. Uh, okay. spaceship back and forth. Although those models did not look particularly good. These look better than that. Okay. And even though I didn't mean to mock it earlier when I said it, I just think this theme would sure. bring in 300,000. I think the, the the art and everything looks nice and streamlined. Mm. No, but it, it looks good, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not my kind of game right. really whatsoever, really. But yeah. it looks good. This is, if I was interested in this kind of game, even if I didn't know the video game, I might right. be tempted. Yeah, I'm with you. I, the, the thing about this, to me, is that I'm a little bit intimidated by the amount of you know yeah. stuff there. Uh, but it definitely is a nice-looking project. I mean, it, it definitely... Who would you play? Okay, what are my choices here? All got, right, well, you got the. These are the stretch goals. So okay. I'm, you know, I'm sure it's Rome. <laughs> there's so these German, are the minis, yeah. Rome, Egypt, Germany. Scythia, Gaul, Hispania, Barbarians, Thracia, N N Numidia, mm -hmm. more Rome. Okay. Carthage, Dacian. I don't know if it's Dacian. More. Man, you got a lot of. I got to go with the Gauls. That Gauls. Because of the cool. uh, asterisk. I'll go with Hispania. Yeah, I love them Gauls. Maybe they have this mm. magic potion, I don't know if you've heard, that makes them really powerful. <laughs> I do like this idea of having an initiative card, and you use that with gold yeah. to make a bid. And the highest mm. bid goes first, so you can bid high but or bid low. I like bidding yeah. for turn order in games. Yeah, I do too. You're I spending do. that. And they. this is a very well put together project. Oh, it looks really fantastic. Your page. And yeah. again, I think that video game background to this helps. Right, it's for a, sure. It's a gorgeous looking page. It looks like every faction placed somewhat yeah, different. Red alert! So, red alert! Okay. What did I? What did I say it was called? You said it was. I said uh, Command and Colors. Command and Colors I meant yeah. Red Alert. Okay. It's a Command and Colors game, practically right. though. And they did the Great War, which I did not play, but that came with a ton of miniatures too. It World did. War One. Yeah, I didn't play that either, but yes. Very nice. All right. Our next project is Heraldic Water Slide Decals for Wargaming. Uh huh. Which are stickers or decals. Right. To put on your miniatures to give them a, a herald, right? Yeah. A, uh, a I logo. actually, so I put this on here because I picked the stuff, and I yeah. thought that's 
not a terrible idea. I like that idea. It seems incredibly niche, but that's probably because I'm ignorant. You know what I mean? To to this kind of world. I'm not a war gamer, uh, so to speak. And and uh, I think it's a neat idea. I, I mean, how is it doing? Is it? Uh, it's only a, it's a it's ten thousand. That's not bad. But it's for decals. Right. Three hundred and fifty seven people have already backed this. So there's definitely. I will say I struggle with decals. I really do. Do you? That how how the process? They're they're better than stickers mm -hmm. in some ways because. When you put a decal on, it's like it's molded on. Right. As opposed to a sticker, you can peel off. You can't no, peel off a decal. You also won't see the edge of the right. actual decal, right? Because that's usually yeah. But the problem is you're putting it in water, waiting to float off. You right. grab it with tweezers, put it on. It's a delicate process. It's a it's a it's a process. Yeah. Yeah. I do think that the the although I think on a shield would be easier. Yeah, I think that the end product is nicer with a decal. You're right, or a decal, but it's a little more work. Even though stickers are no. Yeah, but I think in this case, decals is the way to go. Because yeah. you paint the shield, right. and then you drop the decal on. Yeah. It's neat. Yeah. All right, then we have Hermagore Market. Mm -hmm. And now this one, okay, so you might wonder why I put a project that's only $669 on. But it's because it's this, it was a small it's little print new play. print and play that actually... Doesn't look half bad for a print and play. Yeah. I was. This is a designer that I wasn't familiar by name, but I've heard of the games, many of the games that they put out. Yeah. Um, so I was like, Emmanuel oh, okay. Ornella, who? Oh, he did Pioneers, a Humber Designers expansion, Hermagore. Yeah, I mean, Assyria, I've heard of a number Fantasy of these Pub, games. Ultramare. Oh, Ultramare. Yeah. That's an old. That's a yeah. deep cut. That one. That's an old. Actually, that's one of the best known. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, uh, this stuff. I'm I'm familiar with this designer, mm -hmm. uh, Emmanuel Ornella. Uh, he's got that Bazan's game is my favorite of mm his -hmm. little bidding game, card game. Um, and Ermagor is one of his. It might be his best ranked game actually okay. on BGG. So this is like a roll and write riff and this on is that. It's a spin on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This company okay. is his company. In fact, mind the moves. And the original printing of Ultra Mare or Ultra Mare was from this company, and then Rio Grande picked it up. Okay. Oh, all right, okay. It changed it up a little bit. Um, so I was very surprised to see this when I saw it. That word, Ermagor. Like, yeah, yeah. Ermagor Market. I'm like, is this by any chance yeah. for Mornella, right? I'm mm -hmm. looking, I'm like, oh. Right. Okay, he reworked his own game. Yeah. And did this roll and write thing. Right. So that's interesting. Right. He hasn't done too much lately. It's He's also not a designer that's done a lot. It's four bucks. Right. Yeah. Three yeah. euros. And this we, is I I don't know. I just like this sort of thing. Yeah. And, it's cool. And we had talked when we looked at the one like voyages maybe a week or two ago that yeah. Matthew Dunstan is doing. That's a print and play. You know, from a, an acclaimed designer. I do, th and we asked, is this going to be the start of a, of a little mini trend? It looks like it might be. It might be. I, I mean, it seems like you don't have to worry about the supply chain. You don't have to worry about the shipping. Any of that stuff. It's direct to the consumer, right? And I know that I've, I've said in the past, roll rights are kind of a dime a dozen. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's making them. This is not a bad, I'll pay four bucks right. it's plus like, it's like double the cost because I'm going to have to print them sure, out. Sure, sure. And printing isn't cheap. But yeah, it's double the cost. It's still eight bucks or whatever. Right. And I can play the game. And then you know what? If it is a passing fad, which I find a lot of roll rights are, yes. I got my money's worth. Sure. Yeah. A couple of plays and you're good. And you'll get to play it soon. Right. Too. And exactly. I also, again, you can laminate it. And then sure. it's a really cheap game. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You just, yeah, you get as many players and you know, and you laminate them. All right. Dirty laundry card game. Now, I was just applauding a small game. Mm -hmm. Now I shall not. No. This one looks uh, a bit derivative. Yeah, it looks like a take that kind I'm of game. I'm actually trying to really... figure out why I put this on the list here. Because it's yeah. terrible looking. It does not look good, the, 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 the actual. Except I do like the fact that you can. Throw a red sock in, nah, and ruin everyone else's garments. Okay, that's I mean, that's a, uh, funny, yeah, yeah. Okay. Someone yeah. was just asking my wife last night how to get. They were like, one of their kids had thrown blue and every, and oh, their, their new white shirt was now like blue, and how to fix it. And it was kind of like, stop buying white bleach. Shirt. Buy a new shirt. No mm -hmm. bleach. Bleach will not completely take no, out the right, color. You'll still have a little tinge of, of the color there. Yeah. That's how you do it. This game does not look uh, interesting to me in the least. So I mean, why are we spending time on it? Let's I don't move know. on. Yeah. There you go, Tom. Uh, this was your turn to say the name of the game. Nguyen Hue, maybe? I think Nguyen is as close as I'm going to get. I'm not sure on the <coughs> HGA. Uh, obviously, a, a war game based around a particular uh, battle in, Viet in the Vietnamese War uh, or the Vietnam War. Does it come with miniatures? 
I just I wonder. I don't remember because those you know those those definitely look like they came from Axis and Alex. They kind of do, right? They're not they're not the same miniatures. This is a big war game. Yes. This is look. There's a whole lot of hexes on that board. A lot of green. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm telling you these. You're right, it is miniatures. I'll tell you what, these kind of games almost never come with miniatures. Yeah. This yeah. is a weird mix. That Sounds is very odd. Counters yeah. through and through. Right. Blocks if you want to go fancy. Mm -hmm. Miniatures is better to me than counters because it means I have less things to differentiate. When there's when there's yeah. counters, there's usually like 100 different units. I suppose that's true. My preference, if I had to pick one, would actually be counters or blocks because they have data on them. Well, yeah, but I if you want, but yes, you're right. The fact that you can, you're going with counters, then um, makes the designer want to add a hundred different units. Yes, kind, right, you know right, what I mean? right, right, right. So fewer units, but with counters, so I can look at it and go, that guy hits for three or whatever. Otherwise, you have to reference something else if it's a miniature. This is actually intriguing me a bit, just is because. It? I mean, it's still uh, terrain effects, but I mean, it looks. Oh man, the cards aren't. Aren't, aren't very good, but I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, no, this there's this one. Sorry, go ahead. No, Mike. go go ahead. No, I'm fine. I was gonna say there's one war game later on that I think looks better. Yeah. Okay. All right, back to game found. Ravage Star, Armies of the Veil Touched. That's a that's a name and uh, a hat. I was confounded by it's, this. It's not a by good the name? name. It's not a good name. I was confounded by what this is. This is not a game, as far as I can tell. <laughs> no, it's sci-fi miniatures, miniatures to use yes. in your games. Yes. Okay. Which, which, Why does what it need game? like a world then? I'm confused that this is, this has a world built around it. Mm -hmm. It looks like games with expansion boxes. This is not a game. This is merely miniatures. Right. I don't mean that to sound uh, belittling. Miniatures, I'm sure, were very difficult to design and sculpt and all that. I just think there's a lot of theme that got pumped in when all I'm going to be doing is taking them and putting them into a game that has theme. Right. Well, I think, right? and I might be wrong here, but looking at this particular set here, and Roy, you might, you can tell me if I'm wrong or not, this sure looks like 40K. Uh, a lot. I mean, that looks... Roy says a lot. Mm -hmm. and that, I mean, that really looks like... Um, the uh, Space, Space Marines. Marines. Chaos Space Marines, but it's a different faction, so they're... Because you're very smart when you deal with Games Workshop. You don't mention them at all. No, no. <laughs> and I wonder if that's what this is for, and they're just going about it in a long roundabout way. If that's the case, I can see why people would back this, and I can see why they would add the story in, because I can say, here's my army, mm -hmm. and maybe somewhere online there's someone made an unofficial army build for this and then it makes sense okay. yeah if they're trying to do something that you can play into 40k it would make a lot, a lot more i'll sense. tell you what this looks very much like 40k well then that's then that's what it's about and it has to be right yeah, i guess so it's doing it i mean it's doing really very well, well. yeah well yeah again it's miniatures but i but if i'll tell you what if i played 40k and <clears throat> still Mm -hmm. And this came out, I would be tempted because miniatures for 40k are really expensive, and, and I don't you, care how expensive these are, they're going to be cheaper. And you have to you have to build those, right? These are not on sprues, I assume. I assume these are molded minis. Oh yeah, that, and that's another thing, right? Yeah. So for 119 dollars, if I can get all this, you don't get all that from Games Workshop for 119 dollars. Right, right. You would get two of them. Yeah, <laughs> maybe a few more, but right. not not many. Mm. That's yeah, interesting. Was, it was it was yeah, it was a strange and unique project. That was, I kept reading it, going, "This is not a game, right? This <laughs> yeah. is just mini." Right, right, right. It looks like a game. It does. Interesting. Mm. Interesting. Nearly, All right, nearly half a million dollars. Though. Yeah, it's doing it's doing well. Yucatan. So we played Yucatan. Yeah. Recently, and I. I enjoyed the game a lot. Yes. It, there's still some work that might be done on the rules, I'm not sure. But I'm not thrown, uh, being perfectly safe, not thrown by the in, the the look of the game. Mm -hmm. well, what I mean, there was this giant pyramid that we played with, and I don't know that why that needs to be included. The yeah. miniatures look great. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, that board is also not interesting to me at all. But... The game is fine. It's kind of yeah. weird. It's just weird. I like right. the game. I just didn't like how the board and the pyramids looked. Yeah, I enjoyed the game, and you can definitely at least see the shared DNA with Kemet. 
Um, yes. Th there's definitely enough there that you can see that it's kind of part of that same thing. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're kind of putting that as part of the, you know, the, the Kemet, you know, the, the Cyclades, Kemet, and, and Yucatan now. Um, I wonder, player interactivity-wise, it feels to me like this is maybe the least interactive, maybe even less interactive than Cyclades. What would you think, just on a first game? Uh, no, we attacked each other the entire game. What are you talking but, about? Uh, yeah, but it was the attacking was not, I guess maybe interactive is the wrong word. It um, does have an anteater. You, when you oftentimes you want to attack, even if you know you're going to lose. I don't know that that's the same way as much in Kemet or in Cyclades. I Cyclides. still think it's interactive. Yeah, I think I'm, I, mean, I agree with you. I think interactive was maybe the wrong term. It just doesn't feel. In a weird oh, yeah, centipede. yeah. It doesn't feel quite as. Um, I don't know. Okay. I don't like centipedes. You like centipedes? I think they're one of the I most disgusting centipede. insects mm. there is. My favorite meals. Yeah. Um, I guess, yeah, it's abstracted, I guess, yeah. in a way that you're finding hard to reconcile in your mind. Right? Yeah, it just feels a little different than the combat in the other two games. Right. And so, like, maybe it doesn't feel like combat. Right, combat, it really, really doesn't. It feels like your people are more just resources than anything yeah. else. So, I don't know. It's an, it was. Yeah, it looks cool. like you guys were having a good time. There's some with quotes. It. It's fast. It's a game encouraging you to attack one another with a great benefit. It has a giant anteater. I feel like I'm on a one track train I'm gonna, here. I'm going to try not to take this thing personally. This is now the second time. But yeah. there was a live playthrough <laughs> on the dice tower. Actually, this three one's, people played. This one's my my fault. He emailed me. He's like, "Can I get a quote?" And I said, "Yeah." You know what? You should ask Camille for a quote. Uh, <laughs> the second time now, uh, three uh, people were in the game. Quotes from two. What did Camille say? Everything I want from Nothing a combat from game. Well, Interesting theme. Oh, here, give your quote now. I'm out. Oh, come I'm, on. I'm, no, I'm these over are it. I'm over quotes. It. Yes. You're gonna be like the game with the game. And I like gonna, the game. It's not gonna be good. Game yeah. good. It right. sounds like I gave him a quote. Mm. The Third World War. You know, oh do you feel like we're at the point now where this doesn't... When I was a kid, mm -hmm. we like we had two World Wars, the third one, because it was 40 years... Well, when I was a kid, it was 30, 40 years since the last World War. Yes. It's now been 80 years. It feels like we may have already had a Third World <laughs> War or something. Like, right. This doesn't... I don't know. This doesn't have that same meaning anymore. Yeah. Anyway. That I be guess so, but also in... I mean, oh, it is 1989, so it yeah. could have happened. Mathematically speaking, also, as games later and later get named the Third World War, we keep get, we are closer to an actual Third World War, if ever one happens. So at some point, it's no longer funny, man. Mm. Okay? Stop it. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You oh, see? okay. Well, Even this... if it happens in, like, 2280, right. we keep getting closer to mm. eventually possi the possibility of a Third right. World War. Breaking right. news, he announces the date of the Third World War. That's 2280. Right. May 28th, uh -huh. 2280. Wow. Nostradamsy. <laughs> okay, in case you haven't noticed, though, this game is slightly large. A little bit. Because there's a map. There's a map. Yeah. There's a map. Yeah. There's a map. There's oh, my word! They're basically just taking pre-existing maps and throwing tiny right. hexes but on How many them, pages right? do you think I mean, the rule book has? Only 44. Uh, That's not bad. I'm going to say 44. <laughs> Well, Compass Game, <laughs> you ask a question, you should wait until people give you an answer. I'll tell you what. Correct. There are full pages of rules, though. Yeah, they oh, are. That's fine. That's light reading. Look at, yeah. 16.3.5. There's a product coming up much later in this, uh, in this uh, video that I would utilize to read this in a certain place ah, in my house. Ah, I know. That's, that's the only place to read this. <laughs> yes. Anyway, I'm not... This is, I'm sure a lot of people are really excited about this game. It is pretty big. And, 50 and grand. Is this the one that you're talking about? You play this over the other one? Nah. No, I think there's another one that is on Game 5. Oh, Let me okay, put it to this okay. way, Tom. I cannot imagine any scenario ever where Z plays this game. Oh, <laughs> That's why I was really confused. Valid, that game. Yeah, or yeah, this one, for that matter. Solar Punk Future is a utopian storytelling game. As soon as... For me, sometimes there's triggers where I'm out. <laughs> storytelling game is a good way to get me out of a game. Not a game that has a story Not in it. story driven. Right. Storytelling. We tell a story, yeah. If you tell I me agree. that, I'm kind of like out because it's been done many, many times and every time i played one, you're either storytelling right. or you're playing a game. Putting the two together is hard. They're usually just prompts, right? It's like, it, yeah. it, 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 it's no different than sitting around a campfire and telling stories except maybe you're given some kind of prompts. That being said, you know? this one is a... This one is a weird one. Well, it's got like floppy disk thing happening oh, there. It's just and... Weird cards. But yeah. Yeah, the idea here is the, 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 the folks putting the project together are sick of dark, 
post-apocalyptic future. Sure. They want a, new, a utopian future. Right. And so this. And is, I'm with you on that. I disagree fully, but uh, <laughs> these are prompts yeah. to tell stories about good futures. Right. That's the game. That's Actually, about I it. don't know what the rules really are, but that's the idea behind it. I agree, Tom. This is one of them. That one of those things that, like Mike says, I bounce off of. Speed games, anything slapping. Yep. And storytelling. Yeah. There's actually a couple of storytelling there games are. today. Yeah. And I just don't. It's not my speed. Nope. Not not my thing. New. Nope. Right. Boba though. I picked this I one because I knew Boba. Mike would like the name of it. Boba Mahjong. <laughs> that is a great. It's name. It's a relaunch. Mm -hmm. A two-player Boba card game with a sweet twist. So Boba is one of those. In America, at least right now, it's a very, very trendy thing. Have you ever seen it's Kenny walk past a boba place without going in? I have not. He does, it's oh, no, impossible. it was closed once. Oh, he broke oh, he it. Broke it. <laughs> he broke it. <laughs> there you, go. you know what? But I won't lie. If it's on the menu at a restaurant... You consider it, at least, I do. You? Well, if they have the fruit balls. I don't <laughs> like the tapioca balls. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the, you got to go with, like, like, the popping, passion, popping, the passion fruit. Uh, the passion fruit. Oh. What do yeah, I get? Yeah. Popping lychee, I think, is yeah. my thing. That's also good. Yeah, that is good. But I get passion fruit balls in a mango... That's a pretty good mix. That's right a there. good combo, That's a good mix. man. And this game looks cute, anyway. I mean, I, I do, is it one that I think I would go out of my way to play? No, but it's also not one that I'm like, oh, this just looks like a waste of time. It looks cute. See, comparing this one head to head with that one we saw earlier about the dirty laundry, yeah, kind of similar games, right? right? I mean, now you're into other stuff, Tom. Sure, like rolling right and stuff, but. We got that game in the in the I, studio I once. I think I reviewed one. of You these may have guys. reviewed that macaron. Maybe, anyway, um, yeah, yeah. These it's, all it's, came through. Okay. I sent cats. Okay. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> they seem kind of similar, but yeah. this looks just more lovely. Like more yeah. effort went into this. You right. know. Right. You gotta appreciate that. That makes a difference. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not familiar very much with Mahjong, so I don't know how much this actually leads into that. Or has... Mahjong is just, I mean, it's, it's just like reduce a... it, and right. I know I'm doing that. It's rummy-esque. That's what I figured. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Playing sets and runs. Okay. There's the artist. Good, good artwork. The art is great. Beautiful. The art is great. Purple Haze. Now, I've seen some yelling online about the name of this game. Why? Uh... Does it mean something that uh, we're not aware of? Well, Purple of? Haze is the it's name of It's a Jimi Hendrix song, but he was... But they said that song is not about Vietnam, is what I... I it was okay. what the complaints were I heard. I guess. Uh, I don't the, know enough the, about the song. But or, the time period's not far off, and I don't know. I, I don't... I think... I don't know. Anyway, I, I, I don't know. This is the war game. Yeah, this, this is the This one, one looks, looks better, interesting yeah. to me. I agree. This, this doesn't look like a standard war game, either. Um... Yeah, no, this, I'm with you, Z. I think this is one I would actually check out. Yeah, and I'm showing my musical in ignorance here. So there's a song called Purple Haze and Purple Rain. Yes, uh, Purple Haze is Jimi Hendrix, Purple Rain is Prince. I know, the, I know the Purple Rain song, although I have that country western version that you hate it that I suck on my... I'm sure you've heard Purple Haze before, too. I, prob I, I might have, so... It goes like this. Purple Haze, Purple <laughs> Haze. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Only want to see you choking in the purple. This haze. does look good. Who's the company for? Oh, this Phalanx. is Phalanx. Phalanx. Yeah, Phalanx has some pretty solid looking they war do. games when they make yeah. them. Yeah, good front. Like I also that like that, too. that. That yeah, that cover is That's a, a solid look. cover. Right. It looks movie poster. -y. Yeah, it does. It does. I'm uh, I'm intrigued by that one. All right, make 100. So this is yeah. Make 100, which has 167 backers, by the way. But anyway, custom engraved dice vaults, huh? I'm confused by this that. Is, is it 100 of each of type? Things, this whole Make 100 thing yeah. is a line. I've seen many projects do right. where they, I guess I don't get it. They promise to only make 100? Maybe it's 100 of each type. Maybe it's 100 of each type. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. It says, okay. well, it says there's limited. There's 160. Okay. So this is make, anyway. Okay. Yeah. Taking that out of the equation, these look pretty cool. Mm-hmm. They're neat. Yeah. I I think that one with the solar or lunar eclipse deal near the top there is, is my choice. Did it? Which one? Go back up top. It's right. This there. one here. One there. The middle, yeah. Yeah, they're they're fine. I like that one the best. What are you What are you going with here, Tom? Oh, that first one is good too. Octo, the octopus looking thing. I don't know. I don't. Maybe this one here with the person doing. I don't like the the face of the guy. That's kind of that's too close up for me. Back mm -hmm. up, bro. That's right. Yeah, get your get your. Uh... The, the deer antler one feels evilish. Yeah. That is that's kind of a cute Cthulhu. Yeah. No, nah, I think I'll go with the the magician here with the little smoke coming out of their hand. Okay. What do you got, Mike? What do you like? Uh, probably none of them. I'm looking down here. Maybe there's more. Yeah, that that one. I like this one here. I'm gonna go oh, with there's... nah. <laughs> 
Mike doesn't like dice. I like the blushing tankard. Isn't that what that was called up there? <laughs> these Those are look cool. These are cool. These fidget toys. Although, I think the fidget the fidget it's toy like uh, yeah, yeah. fat is miss well, is, yeah. is gone like now. I think watch. fidget toys are, are no longer. Those a thing. are small though. They are look, because yeah. if those, I if, I'm glad they put the dice in that picture. Yes. Because I would not have guessed those were that if small. You're expecting to get a thing this big and yes. then something that's the size of a die. Well, I mean that falls advertising. So that's good, but. Mm -hmm. All right, Magic Crate, the 3D printed modular GM box. Mm -hmm. Do you want a Magic Crate? No. <laughs> uh, if I DM'd, maybe. It looks like it does a lot of uh, helping you set up and contain what, what you're uh, dealing with. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of an odd thing because I like the idea. My only concern is once it's all set up, it looks cheap. I agree. It, it, I think this looks 3D printed. Because if you get a big, beautiful Dungeon Master board, which are not cheap. <laughs> they're not cheap, but they're also not that expensive right. because you're going to use that same Dungeon Master board forever. Right. That's true. Those yeah. look really cool. Mm -hmm. This one holds cards. It's uh, my. I guess I just wonder if somebody is a is a GM or a DM already. They probably have already cobbled together things that take the place of many of these parts, right? Right, right. I mean, they've right. got their rhythm. They've got their their thing they do. I also don't yeah, I want don't this 3D printed. You're gonna make this. That's fine. Then get the molds and make it. Yeah, that's yeah. where I'm at. I just think this is maybe too much. If it's 3D printed, give for... me the give me the files, and I can do it myself. And then I'll then I'll be like, if I was like I 3D printed this, you'd be like, oh cool. If I'm like I bought this off Kickstarter, I'd be like, really? Yeah. Hmm. I know it's an odd no, no, distinction no, I get to make. It, I, get it. I would print this. I get the PDF file and print it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Adorablins. Mm. Another storytelling game book. Mm. But you got you got to admit though, those, those are, are those are some cute. Look at that. Is this, is this from game. the Mint group? It's not, no. but it's in a Mint 10, yeah. That's some cute artwork. Yeah. The artwork is cute, and, and it's hard to hate on it because, I mean, it's it's a very unassuming little project, and, and, you know, good for them. I have absolutely zero interest in it. This artwork is not too far off from Tina's artwork, honestly. It's There's, no, a, there's some similarities no. there. Yeah, and it's a nice-looking page, you know. Look at the mustache on that shroomy mm. fellow. That's a, yeah, that's a good look. Fine mustache. Yeah, storytelling game, again. Um, this looks better than the other one. Mm -hmm. Cutesy, more welcoming. The other one seemed a little preachy. Yeah. Compared to this, this just looks silly. But again, it's I just... It's also pretty not... inexpensive. It is yeah. 14 sure. bucks. Right, that's what I'm saying. It's an unassuming project. Wait, but you most know? people are backing the 19 buck one. Because it's, it's an adventure bundle, Tom. That's the one you got to go with. That's the one with rules. you got to get the bundle. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, have you oh, guys, have, have you heard of this project? No, what's this? Hello, <laughs> is it $5 million you're looking for? That's right around the corner. Yeah, this one's blowing the doors off. And yes, it's a Marvel license and it's zombie side. This is as close to a sure thing Ooh, let's as play you could have come here. with. Let's pick the final numbers here. All right, what was, what did... The highest funding was Frosthaven. What was what did that end at? That's thirteen million, but or something like that. But it's not. We're talking about Seamon Project. So last I know, year, I know, but I, I wanted to have that as a metric. I'm guessing. I'll I'll put my number in right now. I'm I'm going to say eight million seven hundred thousand. Oh, okay. Because last year Marvel United made it was just under or just over five. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's another Marvel game from Seamon. Now right. it has the chibi, so yeah. I think people like non chibi slightly better. I right. think. Was that one? Just it was it was right around five. This one's gonna hit five. I mean, mm -hmm. there's still eight days left. And so you said what seven point? Eight, I said eight million seven hundred thousand. Oh, eight point seven. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll say seven 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 seven. I was actually about to do Mike's flip. I was gonna do seven point eight instead okay. of eight point seven, but you took that. That basically. always happens to you. So here's what I'm gonna do, right? <laughs> seven point seven 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 eight. <laughs> one dollar. One dollar about you. No, I'll come in. Uh, gosh, I'll come in one below. I'll be below you. I don't think it's going to hit 7.7. .7. Okay. Uh, it eight. depends what they add. So it starts yeah. off. So if you if you don't know anything about the game, it's Marvel. It's Zombie Side mm -hmm. with with tweaks. And there's two different games. In one, you're the zombies. In one, you're the heroes. Personally, I don't know which one I would pick to play because I originally was like, oh, I want to be the hero and fight zombies, but I'm tired of fighting zombies. Mm -hmm. So being a zombie fighting but, heroes is kind of a weird twist. The new thing is that first one, yeah. Right. That's Marvel Zombies. That's what they're calling Marvel Zombies. Right. The other thing is Marvel Zombies X-Men Resistance, 
which, in which you are heroes that have not turned right. zombie. It sounds like the first one is the more distinct one. You know, the one that they have that changes on. Yeah, but I think you almost every people. character can you go eat either. The people, and when you eat them, you gain a power. For right. That's kind of cool. I love everything about that. Consuming humans, mm -hmm. special mm -hmm. powers. Mm -hmm. uh, the opinions of Z Garcia that. do not reflect the opinions mm -hmm. of the Dice Tower or its affiliates. I'm just saying. Uh, but I will say one thing this game does come bundled with is some serious sticker shock. Yes. Getting just the one box <coughs> is 130 bucks. Yep. And it obviously only goes up from there. You got to pay for that Marvel license, baby. Yep. I guess you do. You cannot get the second thing without the first either. Yeah. Now, they sent us this Galactus figure. We don't have the actual final one, but we have one that's very close to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it has a replaceable head. Mine does not. Mine's just normal. Um, normal Galactus. It's a pretty impressive figure. It is. It is. Um, I... Okay. Yeah? I, I'm going to be accused of being a contrarian, and maybe it's an accurate... <clears throat> Uh, thing, but I, I have zero interest in this. Really? I have zero interest. Okay, well, that's fine. You don't, you're not a big Marvel guy anyway. But I don't dislike Marvel. But you're not a big zombie side guy at all. I am not a big zombie side guy. Well, then and that's two things. What what else is right, there? Right. I just, I, to, to me. But other people like this, Mike. Of course, and they're yeah, perfectly entitled to. Like it, no, I do There's not. There's a lot I, of I'm, bystanders in this, by the way. They, they really threw in the kitchen sink when it came mm -hmm. to people just. J. Jonah Jameson, he's getting his brain munched up. <laughs> Um, Pepper Potts? Yeah. Munched brain. Yeah, they didn't fool around. So there's all this, and then they add it. I think there's only one add. Well, uh, there might be two now that I... They had the um, Guardians of the Galaxy, I think, was the add-on. My thing is, if you go in, all in on this, right, and then if you do, more power to you, I just struggle to think of have just a volume of stuff that's going to show up at yes, your door. It's going to be box after box after box after box. Try to figure out how to oh, store Fantastic this Four. thing. Oh, Try audience. to figure out how to set this thing up. Try to figure right. out. It's. I mean, I'll tell you this though, Mike. In this particular case, that's more interesting than me. And I know this because of Marvel United. When yeah, I get Marvel when, United is a quarter of the size of this. Oh, game. I get it. But what I'm saying is, and don't. I'm not getting everything. I don't probably. Um, yeah. When I get, you know, the when we got the blood born, mm -hmm. the boxes to the ceiling. Yeah, I, I was open. I was like, oh, this is a cool monster. Ah, that's interesting. When I went through it, here I'm like, this is Mr. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, I Luke Cage, that. and that's that. more interesting then when you know all the characters. I, I suppose I just still feel like it's like you're never gonna play through all this stuff. Never, ever, ever. I am not as interested in here, for example, it's like, hey, you're getting Mr. Fantastic Invisible Woman in a thing mm -hmm. that already come in the base set. I don't need multiple models of the same right, thing. Right. That I'm not as interested in. I know some people like that. I would bet a lot of people are backing this for the models straight sure, up. Sure, sure. And again, obviously, many, many people are super excited. I'm not trying to be a buzzkill. I'm really not. I'm just saying I personally have zero interest in this. This is this is where I feel like we're doing you know and I and I did you know I didn't go all in on the X Men Marvel United but I went all in on the first uh, and this is interesting the two wave shipping yeah but the first one that yeah. first game is October, October this year yeah they that's did, pretty quick for they C did something similar with United uh, where if you did the two wave sure you got but that the was a box. small little game right, it was small well that shows you that this has probably been developed for quite a while I, I just they're uh, ready to go yeah yeah all right. I don't know, my, my cynicism radar is going off. It. It's yeah, just no, going no, off. No, 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 now, Mike, yeah. cynicism now, does I not can't. extend to this one. Does not. So because, I, we will reverse roles here. All right. Because everything, if you get all in on the first series, if you go all in on the second series, all of that fits in a single Calyx cube. <laughs> okay, fine. That's the difference. <laughs> no, what? Sure. And also, it's also this is in Marvel. It's also uh, what, oh, they uh, just uh, added uh, another optional buy Hydra. Uh, there you go. <gasps> I'm in. <laughs> it's like a, it's like a tenth of the price of that too. So yes, this is also probably we'll more come back. stuff. I, I need to the see the only thing here that I will say that that I would say is a little bit more likely to play more of Final Girl than it would be of that is that it's a solo only game. You know what I mean? And you don't have to get a, a, a group together. But we're still on zombies. Saying so. Apparently we're back on zombies. I well, want no, to get Hydra. The new stuff. Yeah. yeah, okay. That's cool. They got Falcon, Quicksilver, She-Hulk, Black Widow, a bunch of Hydra. Okay. If I was getting, of, of the optional buys, that's my least interest that mm. I would get Fantastic Four first. All right. Yeah. Sorry, Mike, continue. No, no, that's fine. So Final Girl, if you're not uh, familiar with it, is a, 
a solo only game where and it's kind of a modular game where you play as the the final girl you you are it's a horror movie you basically different horror movies and you have these feature film boxes which basically you combine the core game with one of these feature film boxes and you've got a 30 to 45 minute solo game that is based off of the hostage negotiator system if you've ever right. played that game which is another solo game by Van Ryder Games I absolutely fell in love with this game it was my number one solo game of 2021 um, so I am all in on this one I mean I, I'm, I'm gonna get everything there is to get for it because I have played the heck out of Final Girl it yeah, the is full so franchise quick to is set up two well, Epic All In is three twenty nine. Right, and Woo, so, it's still a lot of stuff though. It is, and it's about the price of one wow. core box of eighteen hundred people. I've paid that much. Yeah. yeah, because it's got a lot of buzz. There, are, there are a lot of people. Yeah, already, so. yeah, there are a lot of people that missed out on the first wave of Final Girl. It's been blowing up in the solo community. Right. And so they're like, okay, well here I can get all of it. The Ratchet know? Lady. She makes board games. That's right. She, um, she, it's a Ratchet my, track. Yes. This. Is the look of this one different from the first one, or is I'm seeing a lot of different art styles they've, here? They've what they've done is that there are different artists that do different feature film boxes. That that happened during season one. Yes. Oh, okay. And they continue it with season two. They've okay. got different artists that will do like you know this. I one's know doing that annoys the, you. It actually annoys me a little bit, but I don't. Does it matter because you only play one at a time? You only play one at a time. Yeah. And none of the art, per se, is going to be something that is different from what's the core. The core You're box is... mixing two styles of artwork? No. no. Okay. No, that's fine, then, I think, yeah. right? I'll, I actually... I'll, I'll accept it. Okay. He'll allow it. Mm-hmm. These guys are all scary looking. Yeah, they're That's supposed the to be. They're all monsters or killers or whatever. Right, yeah. right. It's a really, really clever system. And um, I think, you know, it, it just hits a lot of sweet spots for me as a solo gamer. So I'm excited about this new series, too. I said we were going to switch things here, but I don't actually have anything negative to say about yeah. this. I think this is cool. Okay. Um, wow, a lot of miniatures. Does that come in at Epic all in? Are they small miniatures? Yeah, they're, they're minis. Yeah, they're, they're small minis. Thanks. It's not an actual book. <laughs> Mini minis. All right. Uh, white Hat. Now, is this, this is game already exists? No, Black, Black Hat, Hat exists. Oh, my word. Yeah. You're right. Mm -hmm. now, Black Hat is a trick-taking game that the came Baron out at Essen. The Baron Bears. It came out at Essen many years ago now, probably. And uh, it's this trick-taking game in which you were advancing down a board. Mm. As you won tricks, you would move your little hat uh, piece yep. down into a new place that might give you a new ability, new whatever. And you would leap over anybody in your way. So that was part of it, this mm -hmm. idea of when you win, because you might want to skip over somebody bloop, and go into the next empty spot. Yeah. Sounds like they're reworking it. They're uh, maybe making the board a little more modular or something. I don't know what's going on with it exactly. I went back because I was curious. I went back and looked at what I thought of Black Hat. It had been too long. I think I reviewed it, like I said, a long time ago. Or you did, or somebody. Mm -hmm. um, the rating wasn't that good. Middle of the pack rating. But... I, even back then, I remember thinking that was a cool idea. The board mm -hmm. thing was a cool yeah. idea. I like trick-taking games where that manipulation of cards leads to something on a board. Moving, uh, you know, spreading, jumping somebody over, or trying to control something. It's not particularly doing well, though. It's not. Yeah. It's not. The original one has a pretty terrible BGG rating. It's like uh. 10,000 and change. That's the BGG rating. Still... This looks neat, and I yeah. like trick-taking games. I'd like to see what they reworked, you know what I mean? I'm tempted to give it a shot, because I want to see, with this many more years of experience, what's stronger, what's more interesting, is it going to hook me this time around? Right. That's that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah. The only thing missing for me? Marvel. That's all you need. Yep. No, I don't think that. I want Mysterio helmets. <laughs> Roy, <laughs> Roy, do we have a video or no? Nope. All right, before we do our picks of the week, let's take a look, and by the way, for your pick of the week, I didn't make a poll this time, so just shout it out in chat. Have oh, fun! Oh boy, here Woo. we go. Here we go. Okay. Zombies! <laughs> yeah, it's probably Marvel Zombies, or, or it's Final Girl. One of those two, right? <laughs> um, let's take a look at some non board gaming stuff. Here we go. All right. Oh. Handsome oh, yeah. hand hooks. Wow. I actually would buy these. Yes, I actually would. would not. Hey, remember <laughs> earlier when we were talking about things that look very obviously 3D printed and therefore cheap? How about hanging it on your wall permanently? Well,. If this was molded, I maybe I it's might, kind of a right. weird thing, but maybe it would but it would be like one of you can see the lines. Right. No, no, no. I get that. I 
you're right. I, I didn't think about the 3D printing. I, I like the concept of it, though. What you need to do is get one of those plastic hand chairs. Have you seen those where you sit in the hand, and no, then I, you have one of these on either side of you, so it's just not, your whole room is made of hands? I don't hands. think those are comfortable. No, they're not. <laughs> it's so creepy. Wouldn't that be awful? Like a room made of limbs and Yeah, hands just hands stuff, everywhere, yeah. yeah. I do like that. Your bed, mm -hmm. you can have a custom bed frame where the, the feet are actual feet on the bed frame. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Can you imagine like a yeah, roommate yeah. to look like that? Yeah, see, like, look, that just looks so cheap to me. Careful, because the unicorn's coming, Tom. I saw the unicorn. <laughs> All right. We the went claw. Right. Quickly Crip, pass the unicorn. Horns, fist, uh -huh. the pointer. The bang, 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 bang. Which is very different than the Five pointer. Five would be useful for keys, uh -huh. etc. All right, let's move on. That's pretty funny. Let's say you only have two toes. Right. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> okay, but uh, okay, that so that's my joke. Works. Right. But it is that really how your foot works? Do you use it? I'm not. I'm not joking here. I mean, you're inspired. This is inspired by ninjas. I <laughs> I don't quite understand because the idea, from what I get, is that the only it looks one like a that cow hoof. not only is it look like a cow hoof. From the way I understand it, only your big toe goes in the left side. Well, then maybe that's it though. Maybe maybe. How big is their big toe? Is one big toe the size of your your other toe? Actually. It, Remember, it might just be the angle at which you're Yeah, and also your big toe it sticks out farther. So your little toe is... It, really, it's yeah, back no. farther, so... It, well, not everybody. That's one of those genetic trait things. Some people, their second toe is longer than their big toe. Other people, their big toe is longer than their second toe. My big toe is longer. Like my big, my, no, my second toe is big, longer it's than my like big toe. It's kind of like this, yeah, the hand yeah. thing. Prove yeah. it. I will take my <laughs> no, shoes off right now. <laughs> and if you do, I'll get you a pair of these. I'll put them very close to your face. <laughs> All right. Um, this looks fine. I mean, this I reminds me of those it. people who wear those, those shoes that have all the toes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's got to be less comfortable than this. I think those look kind of creepy. Does myself, this like but. let you? So your toe is going down while the other parts. I don't, I don't know what the what the purpose of them are. There, there must be some reason for it. There must look be at some. That. Look at that. that. Yeah, it's like not an attractive thing for him to be like. Look what your foot can do. I tell you, I do I'll that with this. my toes though. You want to be made fun of in high school? Yeah. Oh yeah. Put these on. See? Oh, so it. it it breaks the space up instead of squishing your feet together. <laughs> uh -huh. It's supposed to be a natural stand so that your yeah. foot wasn't shoved into an unnatural space. It helps you balance. And your toe can balance. Correct. Okay. I'll tell you what, though. These these have to be. I don't care about anything else. They have to be super comfortable. Yeah. And that, yeah. the problem is I'm not backing a shoe. That's what I was just going to say. Let me tell you the one thing I would never consider backing on, on a Kickstarter or a Underwear. Crowd. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I'd more I'd get underwear before I'd get shoes. <laughs> All right. What about electronic shoes? Tom? Electronic shoes. Shut up, man. Yeah, mm -hmm. baby. You know what I'm worried about with these though? The friction between the toe and the the big toe and the rest of the toes. Mm -hmm. You might feel that. Yeah, but that, I think that's actually what this is supposed to like get rid of. I've actually had no, a problem no, with my no, feet no. before. I'm not talking about the actual <laughs> friction between the naked toes. Uh -huh. I'm talking about the rubberized. You think you'll start a foot. fire? Like no, running? it might feel uncomfortable. Oh, you okay. feel it clack, right. clack, like that rubbing. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Also, I just feel like you'd be messing with them all the time. You'd always be like moving. You know yeah. how like when you when you lost a tooth as a kid, you just kept moving your tongue back. Mm -hmm. to, I feel like you'd just be doing this all day. Oh yeah, but you get used to it, like the tooth thing. Maybe. I, but again, it comes down to I have never in my life bought a pair of shoes online. I need to put them on. Those shoes you also need look like they have zero support shoes. right there. You gotta put them on. Yeah, this is. That's this more is. of a modern thing, though, Mike. A lot of is shoes to do this. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, this this one I I have no. All I, right, if you want to have an interesting day, watch the video. This guy <laughs> doesn't break into a smile. I think for the whole thing, but mm -hmm. he made you some toaster tongs. This is make one hundred. So again, yeah, these are made from uh, bamboo. Yes. Right. So here we and, go. Look you know, go. so just the other day I was making hash browns in sure. a toaster. Sure. And I was thinking, how do I get these out? Because they fall in a little right. bit. Right. So I used a, a spoon because I'm not using a knife. You know, I use a spoon, and they came out pretty easily. You gotta be careful with yeah, that. You definitely you want to. You definitely want to cram yes, metal, yes. metal utensils into an electrical. Again. Device. Oh. This is but, a nice solution, but Tom, how much would you pay for a pair of these tongs? I would have to be in the mood to buy. My wife is very much opposed to me buying okay. any single-use thing. But right. if I was gonna buy I'm them, with her. okay. If I'm if I'm how gonna much, buy a right. single-use thing, and my wife's not around to stop me. I'd pay at most fifteen bucks. Oh I'm, no, I'm, this gets six dollars for me. Yeah, I'm thinking <laughs> I'm, I'm at about ten. That's about as high yeah, as I yeah. go. All right, what's, he's up in Marshall's. What's right. our winner, Mike? Two hundred dollars. But it says a serial number on it. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care if it's got a serial number. number. I don't care if it's an NFT. I don't care if it's made by ninjas. 
It's nowhere. Oh, no. no I said the word. This can't be $200. I don't get it. I, oh, I don't. Don't understand. How much does bamboo cost? Yeah, wait till the day the kid's like, I, I broke. <laughs> oh, my God. Right. <laughs> Does it, isn't the whole point of bamboo is that it grows like 16 feet in an hour? This stuff should be everywhere, right? It should cost pennies. <laughs> right? Those tongs eventually will not fade. These are Pino no, they're Pinocchio tongs, right? It doesn't grow after you. Yes, it does. That's what I'm saying. Bamboo these works. are going to be extended length. Right. You continually have to trim these things now. Eventually, I'm you can grab your toast from the living That's room. That's right. Two hundred dollars, and I gotta trim right. these things every week. This is right. ridiculous. <laughs> Moving on. Do you want to hold your <laughs> yoga towel down because you're, apparently you're not on it? Actually, mm -hmm. I thought this was an interesting idea. This is yeah. This is an idea that that since I don't do yoga, I didn't realize was it was a problem. Okay, but but I'm not gonna say that this isn't a problem. I guess my thing is that you do a lot of laying and bending and contorting yeah. on a yoga mat. They make it look like these are comfortable. I can't imagine it's going to feel good if you wrench your hand across this or your skull <laughs> you're or you're in Mike downward dog. Like, violent yoga. Look, <laughs> you're in downward dog. All of a sudden, one of these clips fly off. They hit you in the face. What are you going to do you then? Know what, all right, let's move on. Here's the thing about this. Hold on. Go back to that. No, it's Mike, like, I don't want Mike to yell again. The, 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 I don't understand. Yeah. I did not realize there was a big demand right. to hold down a towel mm -hmm. on top of a yoga mat. I thought you just used the mat. A yoga mat to the floor. No, no, no. It just holds a towel, towel. to a yoga mat. So that's right. the thing. I thought that's people. The point of I thought the people. Yoga mat. Right. I thought people did stuff straight on the yoga mat. They do. Yes. They do. And it, maybe if you're doing um, hot yoga, you know, where I you're don't know sweating. What hot yoga is. I've never done it myself. It's, a, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's, Clearly, you, you, you turn up the, the heat. Really <laughs> you know what? Let's move on. Can you get a? I need a break. I need a specific kind of break. Bathroom. I want to get a 3D printed hand to hold right. my yoga mat. Right. First of all, yeah. folks, don't. This video is not NSFW, but no. you feel like it's going you to feel be. Like it's going to be three more frames. Yeah, and it's, he'd be in twelve. It's not NSFW, but there is a man removing his pants. <laughs> yeah. Uh, again. The, okay. So. Okay. We've had seen a couple of these types of projects. Sure, but here's the thing. I get half of it. Mm -hmm. Like. Sometimes I'm like, I'm going to take a, an hour. <laughs> I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to be in the tub for an hour. Okay. And I want to, I would like to watch something. So then I just, I'll set my computer like far away because I don't want it to get wet. Right. You don't I mean, get... I don't want to, I don't want to take a chance. I'm never going to read my phone in the bathtub because I don't want to drop it. Yeah. I get that. Mm -hmm. What I don't get is the toilet part. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I can hold my phone there. Yeah, I mean, be careful because we could really phone, go down a long. You're sitting on the toilet <laughs> holding your own phone. You're basically a peasant. <laughs> you, sh you shouldn't be. You don't deserve indoor plumbing. Like this lady here, like what? Come on! All I'm saying is, when you're on the toilet, you should never be streaming. That's just a common thing that you should keep that in mind at all times. <laughs> Thank you. I'm all about the uh, Zoom meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Put them on the cast. All right. So this, anyway, are you muted? Last project. Yeah. Hey, no longer finger bot. Mm -hmm. We now have buddy bot. So here's, look, look, this is a great idea. You've got kids. You don't want them to get tech neck, which is, I guess, what they called it here. <laughs> where, did, yeah. where they've got your... So here's what you want to do. You want to give them something that looks like a terrifying nightmare creature and cram it right up next to them so that they are frozen immobile on the couch. All right. This child will never move because he's got a terrifying robotic creature this is keeping a, him pinned this to the is couch. A product in, this is a solution in search of a problem. Right. It really is. It's also terrifying. This, is when, this was in War of the World. So yes. There's one video with a girl getting into the car. Right. And then she gets in, and the dad is like wrestling Buddy Bot right. into the seat over. Wait a minute. It goes right. in a car? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, come on. And it, it, I'll tell you what. I'm going to trade neck stiffness for terrifying nightmares every time. I'll I don't take get, the neck stiffness. I just don't get the, the fact that it needs to be a bot. <laughs> no. Like, I mean, you make because a 3D. It looks like a weird spider. It feels and like you're trying you to make it friendly. Right, yeah, yeah. It's like, <laughs> it also looks like you should be able to bring it to you, you know? Yeah. It's not going to happen. I All thought right. at first it would be a moving thing, like you call it. <laughs> right, Come yeah. here, boy. Yeah, yeah. No, it's just a, it's a, it's a bracket. It's like the clapper. It's just like, yeah. Okay. You know what? I hope you were looking at what the People's Choice was because I didn't look at I it at all. I have no idea. I don't like Tron. All right, yeah. vote, ag vote again for People's Choice because we totally were not watching. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We well, why we're doing that? Oh, that's true. We can stream up. I don't know if people were picking it. I think they got uh, mesmerized by the uh, other stuff. Uh, no, this might not have been any uh, any picking. That yeah. Happened. Keep going. Oh, Dice oh, Tower oh, Kickstarter. Oh, 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 here's yeah. some. Here's some. Here we go. Marvel Zombie, Rome Total War. 
I'm seeing uh, a lot of final girls. Final girl, final girl, final girl. Yep, yep. A lot of that. Nah, yeah, I'm calling it on those. Yeah. That's final girl for mm -hmm. sure. Final girl it is. All right. So where is final girl here? I bet you anything. It's also Mike's pick of the you week. You can go ahead and put my uh, choice up there. This one was one of the easier weeks for me to pick my, my choice. I'm, I'm very, very excited about this. All righty. Well, then I will also pick my... This was actually a, a tougher thing for me because I'm not a big zombie side fan, yeah. but I am a Marvel fan and mm -hmm. I'm a Galactus fan. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm excited about this. Um, I wish it was a Marvel game that didn't include zombies. However, I do realize that you need something to kill. Yeah. You know, you right. don't want to kill humans, you're a yeah. uh, thing. And, like Z said, I'm not a big zombie fan, but the idea of eating uh, characters getting their powers is a cool concept. Mm -hmm. I hope that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is the big obvious one for me. I'm going to go, I'm going to take a left turn and go with uh, White, White Hat. White Hat. Yeah, yeah. Really? I might, Interesting. I thought you might go there. Yeah, I'm going to go with White Hat. I want to see what they do with this. Um, Will it fund? What's the goal? They'll, they'll fund. They're like 10, 10 euros away. Yeah, so. Come on, someone, make it happen right now. Taking, mm -hmm. card game. Yeah, let's see what you got. It also apparently plays single player. How do you do a one player trick taking game? That's oh, an no. intriguing yeah. notion. Can't yeah. imagine it's good, but it's interesting. Don't forget, of course, our own Kickstarter. This is the last crowd surfing. We'll talk about that. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so at least um, this year, right? Yes, because we fund it, so right. we will do another year. Mm, yes. Right. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, we appreciate that. Um, so there's some no more live stuff today. Correct. We'll be back tomorrow. Tomorrow we got three live things. We got board game breakfast at nine. Yes. At noon. We got um, top 100 games, top 100 of, 100 games of all time, 20 to 11. Oof. And then at 2, we have a live play of Meadow. Ooh. Yep. Um, and then Friday, ooh, Friday's going to oh. be good. We got our top 10 of all time. Um, and then at 2, we're doing a premiere. We've already recorded it and put it together of our playthrough and talking about Kingdom Death Monster. And then at 8, Insanity. Or not. We'll find out. We'll find out. Okay. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. I'm Mike Delicio. Have fun with the spider zombie. Yeah, Mobot, the, the, the buddy bot. I'm terrifying, afraid. yeah. I'm your friend. Mm.